Hi everyone, this is Rich Condon here from Civil War Pittsburgh with uh, Jake Wynn, both contributors to Pennsylvania in the Civil War. Uh, here Jake is actually going to talk about a nine-month regiment from Schuylkill County uh, toward eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, the 129th uh, Jake has close connections to, mm -hmm. so he's going to walk us through uh, the action of the 129th here at Marie's Heights. Yeah, thank you Rich. Um, so. I came across this regiment's uh, story courtesy of my interest in winning history, which is my blog um, about northeastern Pennsylvania um, and its history and culture. Um, and the 129th Pennsylvania is not one of the more famous regiments that's going to come out of that area. Uh, probably the most famous um, is the 48th Pennsylvania. Uh, they're the regiment that is, uh, gains a reputation uh, and some fame. Uh, for digging the famous mine at Petersburg um, in 1864. Uh, a bunch of coal miners digging under Confederate works. Uh, there are a number of other uh, longer serving regiments from, from Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania um, that will gain a reputation, a good reputation through the Civil War. Uh, the 48th Pennsylvania and the 96th Pennsylvania um, being the two most famous. Uh, but the 129th Pennsylvania is a really interesting regiment. I want to get a little bit into their story here at Fredericksburg. Um, just like with Kendrick uh, talking about the 127th Pennsylvania, 129th is one of these nine months regiments that's created at the end of the summer of 1862 because Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln administration is realizing Civil War is not going very well. We need more men. Um, we need them quickly. Um, and so this kind of agreement that they come to is that they're going to create all of these nine months regiments um, with the idea being that if we kind of um, to, to take a page out of modern military history, a surge, if you will, <laughs> um, to try to overwhelm um, Confederate forces in the field, try to boost up these Union armies that are operating in order to ultimately try to defeat them in, this, in the, uh, the late part of 1862. Uh, so the 129th Pennsylvania is one of these regiments that's going to be created. I want to talk a little bit about um, the regiment, their experience here at Maurice Heights, but I want to frame that all around this gentleman here. Um, this gentleman is uh, Colonel Jacob Frick. Um, he is their uh, commander. Um, he has an interesting story. So uh, Colonel Frick was um, actually a, uh, the lieutenant colonel of one of these three-year regiments, uh, one of them that I mentioned before, the 96th Pennsylvania. Um, and he serves with them uh, with some renown through the first year of the American Civil War. He joins that regiment in September of 1861. Uh, what that regiment kind of gained a reputation for though was the nasty infighting within its officer, uh, within the ranks of its officers. Uh, and Colonel Frick, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Frick, and the regiment's commander, uh, a, um, a gentleman uh, named Henry Lutz Cake, did not get along uh, at all. Uh, in fact, there's going to be some, most of their first year of the Civil War in the 96th Pennsylvania is regimental uh, commanders fighting amongst themselves. Uh, that's spilling over into local newspapers on the Pennsylvania home front. It was not pretty. Ultimately, uh, Frick is going to leave the 96th Pennsylvania because he, he um, is honorably discharged because he uh, is going to take over command of this new regiment, which becomes the 129th Pennsylvania. Uh, Frick actually has a, a military reputation that precedes the Civil War. Um, he is a uh, born in Northumberland County, so northwest of Schuylkill County, um, and he serves during the Mexican-American War. Okay. Um, serves as a um, as a, a, a lieutenant in an Ohio regiment um, during the Mexican-American War. Um, he gains a commission from the regular army as a result of his service during the war, um, and is going to do some uh, military service in the pre-war U.S. Army. Kind of bounces around. Um, does some does some things with the U.S. Army, and then is going to join up um, and serve throughout the American Civil War. Um, and in August of 1862, he's going to take over command of the 129th Pennsylvania. Um, like the 127th Pennsylvania, um, this is going Fredericksburg is going to be this regiment's first action. This is going to be the first time as a cohesive unit. Seems to be a common theme here. Very common theme, <laughs> um, and in particular in this part of the battlefield, you you see this a lot. This is going to be the really the first blood for a lot of these regiments, and really they could not have gone into a worse place. Um, so the 129th Pennsylvania, they're not involved um, in, uh, in the fighting on December 11th. Um, they're going to come over the, the, the river, um, and they're going to be mostly, they're going to be staged and ready for the assault on uh, December 13th. I do want to talk just a little bit about what goes on here at Marie's Heights. Um, through the day on December 13th, 
we did talk quite a bit at the southern part of the battlefield of Prospect Hill about kind of how the, the combat nature of combat was there, um, ultimately what the commander's aims were. Um, this part of the battlefield is, is going to be, again, the most famous part, uh, mostly because of the carnage that is going to, uh, to be exacted here. So the heights behind, uh, behind Rich and I are Marie's Heights. Um, these are the, um, this is going to be the area that Confederate forces are going to occupy um, in December of 1862 and ultimately you're going to be where they're going to do their fighting on December 13th. Ultimately what you need to know as a viewer about these heights is that in December of 1862 there is essentially nothing the Union Army could throw at these heights that is going to break this position. What you have is behind this stone wall here, which is a recreated stone wall, um, is Confederate infantry, um, a significant number of Confederate infantry, and on the heights above, you have Confederate artillery. And behind the camera, you can't see it today, and it doesn't really matter because it's a neighborhood that is, looks nothing like it did in December of 1862, is a long plain, uh, wide open, virtually no cover, um, until you get to the outskirts of uh, Fredericksburg itself, which was a smaller city at that stage um, in the 19th century. And so over that open ground is what repeated Union infantry assaults are going over. 127 Pennsylvania is involved in one of those assaults. Those assaults are chewed apart by a combination of Confederate artillery on Marine's Heights and the Confederate infantry behind the stone wall. Um, the closest that anybody is going to get, and there's going to be lots of debates about how close these uh, Union infantry assaults will get to the stone wall, virtually no one gets closer than about 50 yards away. Um, that is how deadly uh, this Confederate um, outpost is. Um, as Avery Lentz mentioned earlier, um, this is a bit of a salient. This position sticks out from the rest of the Confederate line, but it sticks out uh, on a height overlooking a plain that makes this a killing ground where we are standing right now. Into the mix, um, the 129th Pennsylvania is going to get thrown into this towards the end of the day on December 13th as part of an assault that is going to be led by a Pennsylvania commander named Andrew Humphreys. Andrew Humphreys, um, I really wish a uh, shout out to Dana Schof, uh, who was supposed to be here today. Uh, we miss you, Dana. Um, he was going to talk a little bit about, about Andrew Humphreys. He is a fascinating character and shows off that he is a little bit crazy. Um, during this assault. Uh, he happily, giddily even, leads his Pennsylvanians into uh, a final, uh, what virtually becomes a final assault on Marie's Heights on December 13th. After having watched multiple assaults fail spectacularly against this position, Humphreys is going to lead his men. Amongst those units that is going to make the assault is the 129th Pennsylvania, again being led by this gentleman here, Colonel Jacob Frick. Um, there's a, a great letter that's published um, in, the, in the days after um, the battle here at Fredericksburg um, by the, the unit's major, the 129th Pennsylvania's major, Joseph Anthony, um, that I'm going to reference a, a few times throughout um, when I tell the, the regimental story here. Um, but I love that he opens, the, he opens his letter um, and talking about this story. He says that uh, many, of, um, many of his poor fellows bit the dust as a result of, of their experience here. That's that, blunt. That is very yeah. blunt. Um, and so that basically lays out what they're going to experience here. Um, Anthony is gonna kind of describe, he goes through and describes their, the, the regiment's experience. They're gonna come through town, they're gonna get out to the plain on the outskirts of town, and then they're going to be ordered into their lines of battle. And they're going to be marching over ground that has been fought over for most of the day on December 13th. What that means is there is a layer of wounded and dead Union soldiers already laying on the ground as they're going. Many of those that are gonna serve here um, at Fredericksburg on the Union side are gonna describe this. They're gonna say this like a layer of, um, of Union blue on the ground, draping the ground, and that is wounded and dead from previous assaults that have come up here. Um, and so the 129th Pennsylvania, again, never been in combat before. This is what they're experiencing before they even really get up here close to uh, the, the Confederate position. They're already seeing the results of the previous failed assaults. Um, so Major Anthony describes, um, as they come out of the town, the shot, uh, shot and shell fell fast and furious around us. It shattered the buildings and created havoc all around. Um, as they're leaving the town, Joseph Anthony sees his first man killed. Uh, he belonged to another Pennsylvania regiment. 
He was not more than 30 yards away from uh, Major Anthony when he watched the man get struck by one of these shells. Um, it cut the man nearly in two. Um, the man threw up his hands and Major Anthony records him as saying, oh my God, take me. And he expired almost immediately. He describes this experience. You can imagine this horrible sight that he's just seen. And they haven't even barely left the town of Fredericksburg. He said, I have no doubt the sight of this made some of the boys feel quite queer, a little squeamish, as though playing with such balls was not exactly such harmless sport as many of them had imagined. So this is before they're even getting up here towards the heights. Um, Anthony then goes on to describe what this, uh, what this experience was like as they approach across over the plain and come up here towards the, the heights themselves. He says, here we, um, until uh, it grew dusk, when a charge was ordered for the purpose of capturing a stone wall about 200 yards ahead of us, which behind, behind which the rebels lay, pouring in a destructive fire, and the cannoneers working their batteries were fearfully, fearfully exposing us to shots from these batteries behind the stone wall about halfway up the hill, and from all accounts since received, their forces lay thick behind the stone wall in a piece of woods running towards the top of the hill. Perfect description of what lies behind us in the sunshine there the stone wall and the heights with the cannons behind them. Ultimately, this attack is going to fail, like all of the other attacks failed. Um, what is most important about this for the 129th Pennsylvania is the behavior of their colonel. Um, and, and the uh, Colonel Jacob Frick is going to ultimately be awarded the Medal of Honor for his service here. Um, Major Anthony describes this, he says, quote, our colonel exposed himself fearlessly, keeping the line in good order and cheering the men forward in that fearful advance. And afterwards, when we were compelled to retire, he restored the lines once more, so as to be prepared for any movement of the enemy. So um, ultimately, um, another, another great description I wanna just read you for you here um, about what it was like to stand here at Fredericksburg, toe to toe against the Confederates behind that stone wall. This is how Major Joseph Anthony describes it. He says, quote, how the bullets whistled and his, hissed about our heads and the shell exploded right in our midst. Nothing could withstand that withering line of fire. Men fell around me on all sides and it seemed almost a miracle that I was untouched. The line was kept in good order as possible under the circumstances. We, line, we advanced to within a short distance of the wall, perhaps 50 or 75 yards and then flesh and blood could stand it no longer. And ultimately they are going to fall back as so many other thousands of Union soldiers did so on December 13th, they will fall back towards the town of Fredericksburg. Ultimately, um, the casualty toll from the 129th Pennsylvania is pretty steep, uh, which is very similar to many of the uh, units that are going to fight here. Um, ultimately, uh, Colonel Jacob Frick who survives um, his battle experience, goes on to uh, a bit of a longer career that I'll explain in just a second. He is going to count 17 men killed in action, 100 men uh, wounded, and another 22 that were left behind missing, who we will presume most of whom died here at Fredericksburg. Uh, for a grand total of 139, ca 139 casualties uh, from this particular battle. Um, Jacob Frick, when reflecting on his service um, and the service of the regiment um, here in his report, writes that uh, he has little to add to his casualty list. Um, he basically, at the beginning of his report, just lists how many men were killed, wounded, or captured, or missing, um, and then writes underneath that I have but little to add to the above record. Um, it speaks volumes for the men of my regiment, and I cannot speak too highly for their conflict, the conduct. In the terrible conflict of Saturday, December 13th, I believe every officer and every soldier was in his proper place and did his whole duty. Their blood has been shed freely for the preservation of the government and the maintenance of free institutions, and they will be remembered by a grateful people. Ultimately, it is Colonel Frick who is going to be uh, most remembered for what the 129th Pennsylvania did here. Um, a newspaper report back home in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, um, described what uh, Colonel Frick did here. He said, uh, this report says, quote, the colors were shot down five times at Fredericksburg when Colonel Frick seized them and that too on horseback and led on the charge. He is a brave and noble soldier. His men fairly worship him and when he leads, they are sure to follow. 
Sounds a lot like Charles Collis' story. Very Everybody similar. Stopped, but very similar. Very similar. Both Medal of Honor recipients. Now, how um, and and what time span are they taking these 139 casualties here on the battlefield? It's a matter of minutes. No one stands up here for for much longer. Um, this is you're getting up here. You imagine you're taking casualties on your march in over this open plain. You get up here. You get into your line of battle. You fire at the enemy. We're talking about a span of five. 10, maybe a maximum 15 to 20 minutes that they can stand and take this fire before ultimately they're they're yeah. on the retreat and running off. Uh, there is simply no way up here to stand and take this yeah. um, because there's no cover. Uh, and, and they're firing against men who are uphill uh, and also um, and you're saying they have cover, you don't. And so there's simply no way that they can, they can stand up to this. Some men talk about a, a swale in the ground down the hill, but that really was the only, literally the only cover in this general area. So if you visit Fredericksburg today and come to Marie's Heights, you stand up here near the stone wall and you look down toward the town of Fredericksburg, you're only going to see houses and basically, you know, late 19th and 20th century, mostly 20th century development. So it's really hard right. to get an idea what it was like for these federal troops like the 129th Pennsylvania. Who are crossing this open ground? Yeah, unfortunately, um, Fredericksburg is one of these um, one of these, these battlefield preservation. I don't want to say failures, but it's you know it's the the city of Fredericksburg expands uh, naturally uh, over time and, and gradually grew onto this plain outside of town. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right about this this swale of ground that's off to kind of our right, camera left, um, and and rear down towards Fredericksburg where there was a bit of a a bit of ground where people could kind of hide behind mm -hmm. it. Um, for those uh, in the in the 129th Pennsylvania, basically their only cover was to go back towards Fredericksburg, and then there was a, a bit of a, a, a mill race that kind of ran through. There's a bit of a, a divot that they had to cross. Um, ultimately, they could go and hide there, um, but the, the rest of the cover that they had was back in the town of Fredericksburg. So there's virtually nothing that they could do yeah. um, to, to, to get back, other than go back into Fredericksburg which is ultimately what they do, along with the rest of the, um, the Union Army here that makes these assaults. Ultimately, they all go back to Fredericksburg, and two days later, they're crossing back over the river um, onto the Falmouth side of the Rappahannock. The Battle of Fredericksburg is over. Um, ultimately, for um, the 129th Pennsylvania, uh, they are going to be involved in the fighting at Chancellorsville um, in May of 1863 uh, before they get out of the Army. So they're going to experience two battles um, in the course of their service, um, Battle of Fredericksburg and the Battle of Chancellorsville. Ultimately, it's the combination of those two that is going to earn uh, Colonel Jacob Frick the Medal of Honor. Um, he doesn't get it until 30 years after the Civil War in June of 1892. This is what the citation reads. It's going to cite both his Fredericksburg and his Chancellorsville experience. It says, it reads, the President of the United States of America in the name of Congress takes pleasure in presenting the Medal of Honor to Colonel Jacob G. Frick, United States Army, for extraordinary heroism on 13 December 1862 while serving with the 129th Pennsylvania Infantry in action at Fredericksburg, Virginia. Colonel Frick seized the colors and led the command through terrible fire of cannon and musketry. In a hand-to-hand -hand fight at Chancellorsville, Virginia, on 3, 3 May 1863, he recaptured the colors of his regiment. So 129 Pennsylvania is going to be fiercely involved in both this battle and the battle at Chancellorsville um, it, later on in their service, shortly before they are disbanded. Ultimately, Jacob Frick um, is going to be involved. He's going to gain an, um, some more fame for his involvement in the Gettysburg campaign. Uh, he's with the 27th Pennsylvania Emergency Militia. He is at Wrightsville, um, Pennsylvania, ultimately is involved in making the decision to burn the Columbia Wrightsville Bridge uh, to prevent Confederate forces from crossing over the Susquehanna River, is involved in some of the fighting and leading some of the um, engagements there. Uh, he gains some renown for that uh, decision um, and also some scorn, um, I'm sure, from local <laughs> residents um, about burning, the, burning this uh, very important bridge. Um, but Frick goes on to, to live a long life um, and settles down in, in Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania, where he is ultimately buried today. Um, you can go and visit his grave there. Um, unfortunately, it's seen, seen better days, um, but uh, on his grave marker, it does list him as a Medal of Honor recipient. Um, so 
Uh, this 129th Pennsylvania, I, I think that their service here illustrates the experience of what many of these other soldiers and, and, and officers experienced from Pennsylvania during the course of the Battle of Fredericksburg. And do you know if uh, a lot of these 129th Pennsylvania veterans of Fredericksburg and, and Chancellorsville go on to serve in other units after the regiments disbanded? <coughs> some of them do. Um, some of them are going to go and join some of them. Um, there's a big recruitment push for the 48th Pennsylvania and the 96th Pennsylvania uh, in early 1864, end of 1863. Some of them are going to join up with those regiments. Um, others are going to not serve. Some of, the, some of them will go into the, those emergency militias mm -hmm. as well during the Gettysburg campaign. Uh, but many of them, understandably so, have experienced two pretty horrendous battles in nine months service and are not keen to go back into it. Understandable. So, um, Especially it, after this. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, understandably so, they were not as, as keen to, uh, to jump back into the fray after their, after their experience. They're pretty happy to go home uh, to Pennsylvania after their experience. <laughs> Uh, did you have anything else to say before we close up here? That uh, that about wraps it up for me. Uh, if, if you're interested more in this story, um, I do write a bit about, um, I've written about Jacob Frick um, on my blog, Winning History, so I hope you'll check that out. All right, well, uh, that concludes our program here at Marie's Heights. Uh, we're actually going to all go grab some dinner, and uh, while we're there, we're going to kind of draw some conclusions. Uh, so we'll catch you guys here in a little bit. Thank you. Thanks.